Hey everyone, it's Panda here. After posting so many endgame builds, we thought we wanted to do something fresh. And probably you'll be asking, why? Why would I need a heavy bowgun clutch claw meme build? Because why not? Clutch claw builds actually deal quite a lot of damage even though it's a meme build because clutch attacks can also be crit boosted. It essentially uses a heavy bow gun with wyvern snipe as its special ammo and the gameplay is pretty much just clutch attacks. Of course you could use a heavy bow gun with wyvern heart as well since their clutch attacks has more damage but the attack animation lasts for a longer time so you could get interrupted easier. Since this is a meme build, there are a lot of utility and damage related skills that you can customize the builds with. However, do note that the builds are not made for full DPS or clearing the quest faster. They're just made for fun. All clutch attacks are considered draw attacks because when we clutch to the monster, whether the weapon is in or out, our weapon automatically sheathes when clutching, making the next attack a draw attack. So critical draw and punishing draw will activate for clutch attacks of Wyvern Snipe. So you don't actually need to sheath the weapon all the time. Right after you do the clutch claw, you would land with your weapon out and you can continue to clutch in that state by pressing aim, then aim slinger to clutch. Now let's talk about some skills that are good for clutch claw builds to help us maximize damage and utilize it the best we can. Damage related skills. Clutch attacks are affected by affinity and damage skills just like a normal attack. So skills like Coalescence, Peak Performance, Critical Boost, Attack Boost, Agitator, and Attack Ogreman would affect its damage. Coalescence 3 is a skill that gives 18 raw damage whenever you recover from any blight. Peak Performance 3 gives you 20 raw damage whenever you have full health. Critical Boost 3 boosts our critical hits damage from 125% to 140%. Attack Boost and Agitator gives raw damage and affinity. Agitator activates only when monster is enraged. The Attack Augment would boost our base raw damage. Recovery Up The Recovery Up skill gives a lot of health recovery per hit if you augment your weapon to health regeneration. All of the builds will have health regeneration as augmentation as we will need it for peak performance. Critical Draw As we are only going to clutch claw using this build, we are most likely to use Critical Draw which gives affinity on your first attack after sheathing. Even if you clutch claw when your weapon is unsheathed, it still benefits from this skill because once you clutch, your weapon automatically sheaths and therefore making the next attack a draw attack. All other attacks will benefit nothing from this skill. Frostcraft Frostcraft is from Valkana's 4 piece set bonus. When equipped with this Valkana set, you can see the Frostcraft meter on the top left. This meter will deplete with each hit, and its attack bonus drops a level after the meter drops down beyond certain levels. It starts recovering while you are doing the clutch attacks. Quick Sheath the skill will be useful to us to sheath quickly and thus causing the recovery of Frostcraft to be faster. So it's a very good skill to have. Slugger For shorter runs, Slugger could be negligible, but in the longer runs, you will get a few more KO as they build up the stun bar more. This will help you build up the KO bar in team fights as well. There are many variations in the build where you would have earplugs, two specialists, evasion, or Slugger, and so on. It is mostly a personal preference as you are only using Clutch Claw to attack. So the possibilities of how the build goes are actually infinite. We tried to slot most of these skills in, but of course, to have a certain skill, some others need to be sacrificed. So it's really a give and take. We have two builds that uses the Safi Heavy Bowgun with Wyvern Snipe. That is Scotch Cannon, Snipe Cannon, or Rapid Cannon, up to your own preference. This is because Safi weapons could be upgraded with Volcana Essence, which we use for its 4 piece set bonus, Frostcraft, and the Fatalis 2 set bonus, which unlocks the cap of skill secrets. Now, to the builds. The first build is made for easy movement and dodging with Evade Window 5 and Evade Extender 3. These boost the invulnerability period of your rolls and allow you to roll further for dodge. 
with Valkana Essence on the Safi Heavy Bogan. We also used Octampered Valkana's helmet, gloves, and shoes together with Fatalis Shirt A and Belt B. This build has 100% affinity when Agitator is activated. Without Agitator, the affinity will only be at 80%. If you wish to get 100% affinity when Agitator is not active, we can replace some of the utility skills with other affinity skills. You could replace Jumping Evasion Jewels with Tenderizer Evasion to make Weakness Exploit 3 for an extra 20% affinity. Or replace 2 Jumping Evasion with 2 Expert Plus Jewel to make Critical Eye 6 for an extra 20% affinity. By doing so, you can get 100% without Agitator active. Or just replace one jumping evasion with draw evasion jewel to get an extra 30% affinity from draw attacks since we are only using clutch claw. By doing so, we can get 110% affinity without agitator active and lose only one event extender. This build has the same EFR as the next build. The second build is entirely concentrated on two specialists and slugger level 3. Since we are clutch clawing and of course not all monsters give you an easy time when clutch clawing, we will have to use Rocksteady and Temporal Mental to not worry about getting flung off by their attacks. This build has a 110 affinity when Agitator is active. You could also replace the attack augment with affinity augment to get 100% affinity without Agitator. Also, do note that Focus 3 is a side skill from the Arctempered Valkana belt, which is not really useful here. Every other skill is almost the same as that of the previous build, and this also has the same EFR as the first build. The third build uses the Fatalis Heavy Bogan with 4 piece Fatalis for Transcendence that gives Health Boost 3 and Stamina Cap up, which is pretty good for clutching since Clutch Claw eats up stamina very fast. It also has the 2 set Fatalis bonus, which unlocks the capacity of skill secrets. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Frostcraft here. This is for people who want to go for more utility like Divine Blessing and two specialists. With more utility skills, we have to give up some damage, so this build has the least EFR of all the builds. Without Agitator's affinity, we will be having 105% affinity. The last build uses the Fatalis Heavy Bogan with 4-piece Arctempered Volcana for Frostcraft and one piece frost fang for punishing draw which lets us stun more with clutch attacks. Along with that we have slugger 3. Since the fatalis heavy bowgun has more base damage, it gives us a chance to build for more damage while not having too much skills. But the downside here is that we can't use two set bonus of fatalis as we won't be able to have frost craft if so. For this reason we will have to give up our skills for the damage. In short, this is the highest EFR build but with lesser utility skills. Also, the Ice Attack 6 came from Shirt and Gloves which are a total useless skill in this build. This build also have a 100% affinity when Agitator is active. You could also replace the Attack Augment with Affinity Augment to get 100% affinity without Agitator if you want to do so. In the customizable slots, you can go for Geology, Fortitude, Pathbreaker, Divine Blessing, Speed Eating, Constitution, Marathon Runner, Stamina Search, Recovery Up, or Maintenance up to your own preference. Marathon Runner helps to reduce the stamina consumption while you're on the Clutch Claw. Stamina Search helps to recover the stamina faster after the Clutch Claw so you won't be tired. Alright, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.